Hello, I'm Lydia and you're listening to Lens from the Fens. everyone welcome to another episode for lens from the fens i hope that you're all doing well there's certainly hasn't been the best weather again for the last couple of days uh, but today was absolutely amazing um so the date that this has been recorded which is the 9th of october all of this happened today so i'll start from this morning or the day before um, i was at work and i received word that the bearded vulture or the lama gaia was spotted flying over my hometown (laughs) and it was quite late on in the day and obviously I was at work which is about 40 minutes drive so there was no way that I can go and try and see it on my lunch break or anything like that. So I got home quite late and I prayed and I hoped that it would stay around uh, at least till the next day because I would be off work. So it comes to this morning where I woke up at about 8am and I checked uh, through for the updates on the bearded vulture and it was still in the area so I thought I would go off the last known location and work from there. So I drove out about five miles from near where I live. Again I'm not going to give any specific location to it right now Um, but yeah I drove five minutes down the road. It was in that location where I last um, had the updates but it had just moved on (laughs) when I got there. But there was a little owl, so I enjoyed seeing that for a time. And all the crows nearby had um, all relaxed and they weren't like up in the air and trying to fend anything off. So I carried on. I got another update of a new location and that was on the move. So I thought, right, I've got to go and try and find it before it goes out of view or through an inaccessible spot. So, yeah, I followed to that location. I got out of my car and looked across the field and you couldn't mistake it for anything else it was huge (laughs) against uh, the sky and there was uh, crows mobbing it um so but it stayed up for a really long time I was quite surprised how long it stayed up in the air for despite being mobbed and yeah I was just stood in awe I saw it through my binoculars I got a really distant shot of it but I saw it nonetheless and it was an amazing experience there was a couple of other people there but we maintained social distancing and as soon as it was out of shot, then that was it. I was <laughs> I was ecstatic. I was amazed to have seen it and uh, for the other people who have seen it as well. So then we move on to this afternoon. So the weather stayed quite good. It was overcast when I was out this morning. I came back home and the weather was brightening up really nice. It was nice, cold yet sunny autumn weather. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to go and do another walk, talk and shoot episode for you. So this was taken at Bournewoods uh, in the afternoon from about midday onwards. And so much happened um, in spite of going there without any expectations of finding anything. I knew what was there, but I didn't get my hopes up because I knew that obviously um, me being in an environment where um, wildlife is pretty scared or um, quite shy of humans being around um, and there were other people there while I was recording so again I didn't have my hopes up but as you will hear from this episode I definitely saw and heard a lot more than I thought I would um, so yeah with that I will get right into it I hope you enjoyed this recording and I shall speak to you at the end. So I'm at Bournewoods today. It's looking really nice at the minute. The sun's not too bright. There's some clouds. It's a bit nippy. It's definitely autumn weather. But yeah, I've just arrived and um, again, I'm not really expecting to see anything in particular. I'm just seeing what's going to come around. It's more than likely going to be birds and squirrels cashing their food which I've seen happen here before with jays 
but yeah, it's really nice here today. It's meant to be rain later on, but I'm prepared. <laughs> Got my waterproof jacket on and plenty of shelter in the trees. I'm just looking at the ground and there's lots of acorns on the floor and leaves. And I can hear a bird in distance, but not sure what that is. Yeah, there's something really nice about the woods in autumn. This is a nice atmosphere. There's quite a few nests up in the tree. I don't think there's anything in them, no. There's a squirrel behind me. Probably just searching for food. It ran quite quick, so I didn't really get many pictures, but that's okay. I think I can hear some blue tits around as well. I'm just going to go find a path. Yeah, there's a blue tit just above me. So just as I'm walking through, just a little bit of information about the woods. So it's part of the Kistedon Wood and uh, Forestry England. Fairly quiet ancient woodland. It's about 400 acres of wood, which is a mixture of broadleaf and coniferous trees. There's also a pond, more of like in the centre of the wood, which is really good for kingfishers. But otherwise, just any of the usual woodland birds are here, so it's tree creepers, jays squirrels have we just heard and there's also the herd of deer that live in and around the woods I believe they're fallow deer and there is um, I don't think it's pure albino but a very white stag that's part of the group which I have seen before years ago but yeah they've roamed here for quite a long time and there's around 40 individuals, I believe. But I've been coming here for years. I think even before I started getting fully involved with photography. It's just a really nice area to walk around. And autumn's my definitely favourite part of the year to come. Just when all the leaves are shedding and the birds and mammals are a bit more abundant because they're looking for food for the winter to either eat or just stash away. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely part of the area. It's about a 25 minute drive from home. So again, the more local, the better. But yeah, I'll just keep walking through and I'll keep you updated if anything I see, if I get any pictures. There's definitely a lot of acorns on the ground, so. They'll definitely be either the squirrels or the birds caching them, so got as good a chance as anyone. Oh, there's a robin right in front of me. I don't think he's going to stay though. Yeah, he didn't stay. I have found a path now, so I'll be sticking to that for the time being. Some really nice large oak trees in all parts of the wood. Just where all the acorns are dropping off. So I've got five paths to choose from. <laughs> so I think I've come pretty much straight, so if I go left then I'll just keep going left because you can, in effect, do a big circle. But I think when you go off the not-so-man-made path, you've got the more chance of seeing the larger mammals. So the muntjac deers are here. 
I think there's been road deer here before. But yeah, the sun is really nice today. It's about midday. So the sun isn't obviously as high as it would be. But it still feels like it's early morning or mid-morning. That's quite muddy on some parts. So I have to be careful where I step. Some nice patches of fern as well. Which is nice to see when it turns to autumn. Green woodpeckers around. But yeah, the ferns remind me of like the dinosaur era. Because I was a fan of dinosaurs when I was much younger, so I watched all the Walking with Dinosaur episodes and just seeing the scenes when they're in the woodland and it's all covered in ferns. I remember that really well. So it's sort of like a reliving a childhood memory coming to Bournemouth, sort of imagining, oh, will there be dinosaurs around? And yeah, it's definitely a place I can return to throughout the year. Not just for autumn or not just for spring. Because in the springtime you get really nice carpet of bluebells. There's more blue tits around here. I can hear them calling. Or oh, I might have just seen a wren fly off as well. because once one starts all the others start because obviously communicating to each other it was a great tear as well I could see in the trees above I hope you can hear it because they are just all around I can see the wren nestled in the ferns which has flown off there we go yeah it was sort of nestled in the ferns with its head poking out getting a bit closer now they're getting a bit braver sort of standing in between the ferns on either side of the track so I'm not fully camouflaged, but I'm sort of merged in because I've got some camo trousers on. So they're probably wondering what I am. Although the leaves are falling, there's still quite a lot of foliage to compete with. And a lot of the time they are up in the tree, so I'm not exactly eye level with them, which doesn't really create good pictures. I think if you're wanted to photograph either a bird or a mammal you want them to be as eye level with you or with them as you possibly can because then you're not as distorted by the angle the camera's at there's some nice silver birch trees around here as well and I think they're the trees that shed their leaves quicker than any other tree here because they're nearly bare at this point in time and everyone else is just sort of starting to turn to that yellow brown colour so we've got another two paths going left and right ideally I want to have the sun behind me so I'm going to carry on going left it's another squirrel it's two squirrels I think the worst thing you want is uh, shooting into direct sunlight because not only does that backlight your subject it, um, it's just difficult working with that sort of lighting I may have said it before but the best days in my opinion for photographing wildlife is when it's slightly overcast or when you have a good amount of cloud 
because when you get a highlighted subject it's not convenient when you come to edit because when it's completely blown out you lose that detail so yeah I've got my back to the sun so if anything does come in front of me then it's not going to be backlit or it's going to be covered by the shadows of the trees the acorn just fell so I'm watching my head as I go there's the crow not sure where it's resting though I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a picture of the squirrel. It's moving quite fast. I think it's looking for food. Oh, there's some really nice fungi here. I'm just crouched down behind some trees at the minute. Because there's a squirrel foraging in front. So I'm just going to wait around for a bit. And some foliage, so I can't really see. Oh no, there he is, saw his tail. Yeah, it's behind some, I think, blackberry bushes. There's some wood pigeons nearby as well, and they're not spooked, so I'm sort of hoping the squirrel will stick around for a bit longer as well. Try and get some images of it foraging. So my 100 to 400 decided to quit on me <laughs> while I was waiting for the squirrel, but it seems to have gone off anyway. But I found some really nice fungi on an old stump, and I think I've just seen a hornet. <laughs> it wasn't flying, it was on the ground sort of crawling along. Um, so I've taken some pictures of it. There's not really anything I can do for it, but I'm definitely going to get it ID'd. Because I've never, I don't think I've ever seen one before. And for it to be alive in weather as cold as this, it's pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, I've got some pictures of that. I'm just going to take some more pictures of the fun guy. I've um, moved on to my 75 to 300 for some macro shots. So I think. Today you'll be uh, you've been seeing some fungi shots, which is something I haven't really done before. The sun's gone in a bit now, but when the sun was out just now, there were some gorgeous colours from the trees on the floor, which is really nice to see. I don't think I do enjoy landscape photography, but. It's not really something that I've ventured into very much. I think it's just always been wildlife. And if there's been the odd landscape that I really like, then I'll just take the odd photo on my phone. I mean, I see some amazing local photographers where they do landscape work. One I can recommend is Jamie Overland, who's um, a good photographer friend of mine. He's set up a, a YouTube channel. He's on Instagram. So just find Jamie Overland Photography. He does some really good vlogs. Of um, He goes to places like Home Fen. He's been uh, to places in Norfolk. And there's some really nice images, so I recommend you checking him out. But yeah, for me, it's, yeah, it's just all wildlife photography for me. And the odd time that I really like what I see in terms of the landscape, then I'll just take a quick picture on my phone. I think the only recent time I did that was um, in the Peak District when I went up Mam Tor and um, it was some really nice views of the valley beneath. So I got pictures of that, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's more the wildlife that I, I like to take the pictures of. There's a slight incline on this hill, so wild juice if you hear a lot of breathing. 
Yeah, it's on Bourne and out towards the west is where the fence sort of ends. So this is where it can get a bit hilly. This is probably the most of the hills that I see near where I live anyway. So it's not something I'm incredibly used to, but anyway. Oh, it's very muddy on this bit as well. Which I don't remember coming on. So I think I've taken a slightly different route. Got some of the larger areas of coniferous trees to my right. And that's probably one of the areas that the deers like to hide in. It's very tall, it's very dark. Oh, deer tracks. They look fresh. It's definitely one, possibly two. But yeah, those are really recent. Sort of ended here, so it looks like they've gone into one of the side trails. So yeah, into the coniferous wood. I think nature tracking is uh, can be really handy. So there's definitely something you want to educate yourself on before you undertake doing wildlife photography. Then a bit of nature tracking, still good. Okay, there's still some deer prints coming up the path. Still fairly recent. So there must have been definitely more than one coming through this bit. a buzzard. What's it there? I'm not sure what day that was. Oh my gosh. <sighs> There's one of the deers right in front. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it's right on the path in front. And it's just staring at me. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. <gasps> There's a fawn. Oh my gosh, there was a fawn. <gasps> oh wow. I'm not crying, I promise. <laughs> oh, that was... I'm speechless. I am just speechless. <laughs> I just missed the fawn, but the doe was in front. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh, that just made this episode. <laughs> I thought, yeah, deer track's amazing, they're here, but there's no chance that I'm going to see one of the larger deers. But yeah, that wasn't a munchag. That was amazing. I'm standing speechless. <laughs> Oh, and there was a fawn. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I need to keep moving. Oh. Okay, so it did actually come from the coniferous wood. Which is I was right about. So that's good. But I'm just coming up to where it crossed, so... I doubt I'm going to see it off to the right at all. Yeah, I can see the trail it came through. So yeah, it would have gone into across. But oh, 
Oh, I'm just thrilled. Oh, I didn't expect to see any deer. Because normally if there's other people around, they get spooked. So. Oh. <laughs> That'll do me. <laughs> oh, this day. I mentioned it, or I already have mentioned it at the start of this episode, but what I've seen this morning and what I've seen just now has just made my day. <laughs> so there's more, yeah, I can see more tracks <laughs> like going off into the wood. Yeah, and there's deer tracks. So it's definitely a frequent path that they've used. I'm a little bit gutted I didn't get the fawn, but long tits in front of me as well. Long tail tits. That buzzard's a lot closer. It's probably fending something off. very close. It's funny because I was originally going to carry on straight on the path I was on, but this path that I'm going down, it was just lit up by the sun beckoning me <laughs> to come this way. So I turned back and I've, I've gone up this path and yeah, that's, that's when that happened. So it's like a sign. I always believed a deer to be one of the wisest creatures, especially the stags, ones who have lived and seen their generations be born and grow. So in terms of mammals, deers are definitely one of my favourites just for that reason. Where they just look so elegant and all-knowing. So whenever I see Deers in front of me, I sort of see that as a, a good omen. So yeah, as you heard from that episode, it was um, just an amazing experience. I wasn't expecting to see a large or one of the large deers that are in the forest. It was a fallow deer, by the way. It was a, it was a female fallow. And yeah, she was, she stared at me for so long. It felt like ages. It was probably only 10, 20 seconds. But yeah, she stood there looking in my direction for a long time. She didn't sprint off or anything. And I think that main reason being is that she did have the young fawn. So she couldn't have darted off any faster because she obviously has to protect her fawn. But yeah, I just didn't expect that at all. And the fact that I got probably one of my most recent favourite pictures of this year from that um yeah I just I can't put it into words it was an amazing experience as you could tell I, was, I got a bit emotional but it's just those moments where wildlife can just provide the most amazing encounters for you and then to capture it it's it just it made my day not just seeing the llama guy this morning but being out in the local woods, a lovely autumn afternoon. Yeah, it just made the day complete, so I couldn't have asked for anything more from today. So I did look up the hornet, or supposed hornet, and yes, indeed, it was a European hornet. Um, not my most favourite of insects, um, but it, it was still pretty cool to see, um, I mean, it was on the ground and it was just walking along. It wasn't flying or anything. So assuming that, I think the weather, being it that cold, it just couldn't survive very well. Um, but yeah, I've got some pictures of that. I'll put that up at a later date. And I've got some really nice pictures of the fungi that I found. I am no expert on the types of fungi that we have. Um, I think when I post up the pictures, I'll put a description of the name of them. But I'm... Um, I know nothing else about fungi. Um, it's just that in the autumn, obviously, when it's like the moist um, sort of environment, they thrive. 
and the ones I found were all on um, old tree stumps. So yeah, that was really nice to get quite a few macro shots from that. Um, but yeah, today was just an amazing day for me in terms of the wildlife I saw and what I managed to photograph. So yeah, this was probably one of my longer episodes, but I thought I would just get out to you as soon as I can. I think the time that this is going up live is quite late, but just to get it onto like today's history, um, yeah, I just wanted to get it out there because I was so excited by what I've got. Um, so when this goes out on my social media, I will post it alongside the photo I got of the deer, if you haven't seen it already. Again, as I mentioned before, it will be on Instagram, it will be on Facebook under Pinfold Photographic. I do, I am starting to post it more on Twitter now, um, just to coincide with my photographic work. And because it's one of my favourite images to date, I will consider putting it on my Pinfold Photographic website as well. And it will also go alongside uh, the blog that I have up through Medium. But if you visit uh, pinfold-photographic.co.uk, there'll be a series of links where you can find my podcast episodes, my, re my previous ones, um, and there'll be a link to um, my blog as well. So when I have the time, I will post that image up um, on my portfolio and I will also write a blog post about it just because the environment I was in, it was it was amazing. So I'm going to write it all down for you um, just to give um, or try and give a visual representation of what I saw and obviously the picture to go alongside it. So that will go up in the near future. But otherwise, thank you all again for listening. I will be... Uh, doing a couple more sit-ins. I've got a couple more uh, now that the winter season's arriving, so I will provide um, a few facts and a few tips for what to look out for when finding um, winter wildlife. And I have planned a trip out uh, in the near future of another wildlife spectacle that I really hope to see. Uh, but again, I shall keep you all updated and I will speak to you all again very soon. Bye. My podcast cover shows my own image created using Canva. The theme music is provided by Purple Planet Music. Check out their royalty-free music at purple-planet.com.